What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. D and or commentary. Let's turn this down. We got some ritual beast. Uh, we got Shakur 1560 versus Squids. I believe that's Squiddy. 1738. <clears throat> All right. So this has to be Squiddy's first turn because the only thing is in his graveyard is Summoner's Art. Um, okay. That's his normal summon. I guess he'll just attack. Basically, um, he had ultimate kind of hawk out two set uh, two set back row. He flipped over the ambush and then he flipped over the um, the the other one, the one that blows shit up. <laughs> and then basically that was pretty much a wrap. Uh, he blew up both carrier. Um, he wasn't able to do much after that. Squiddy obviously pended the two carriers because he has the full scale here of monolith and scout. He doesn't draw any cards because he didn't tribute summon. All he did was normal summon stealth. Equipped with sacrifice, attack the uh, the Apelio, uh, Apelio, Apelio, yeah, and then he flips over Vanities. Uh, Shakur needs to get rid of Vanities, otherwise he really won't be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh right now. I mean, if there's one thing I know about Spirit Beasts is that they want to special summon a ton, so he he definitely needs to deal with that Vanities. Um, he obviously doesn't have MST, otherwise he just would MST the sacrifice, and then you know pretty much keep going he says he only used pingu once let's read you pingu mm -hmm. okay he's looking at his graveyard i mean he can still do certain things like banishing you know monsters in his graveyard but um just gotta get rid of the vanities man <clears throat> okay so he has mst <laughs> He's not gonna play it. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's not gonna play it. I'm thinking he might have the what's it called? He may have the um. He may have that spell, the uh, the trap, the one that blows all the monsters up. So stealth is flipped. Vanity's emptiness goes down. Uh, then he plays. Uh, sacrifice will probably be uh, like chain link two. Okay, so chain link three is the stealth. So stealth is gonna bounce probably Kana. Nope, not Kana Hawk. Wonder what he's gonna do now. He searches another stealth. I mean, excuse me, another scout. You know, it took me a long time. I totally have forgot that that pendulum monsters are half spells. I just look at them as effect monsters. So, um, what's it called? Sacrifice goes to the graveyard. He searches out a scout, and then he's going to search with the scout in his hand. Vanity's is gone regardless because obviously he, um, well, he just he just had sacrifice at the graveyard, so turns off the vanities for him to get a carrier. And he's already used his normal summon, so it's not like he can use carrier's ability. Now, what he can do is go YOLO with summoning a whole bunch of eighteen beats. And that appears to be what he's going to do. Better hope he doesn't run into a mirror force. Nope. So face down dies. Summoner monk dies too. Ultimate hawk dies. <clears throat> and during the end phase, he will draw one card. As he tributed one monster. <clears throat> Now that kind of sucks if you're Shakur, you just lost your entire board. Although I guess he has a way of recovering. He activates Ambush. So he's going to get two monsters on board. He gets the Leo and the um, the Spirit Beast Tamer. It was like Elden, old guy. Elder, there it is. Just this, It should just be Ritual Beast Spirit Tamer. It should be Ritual Beast Tamer Old Guy. That's what it should be. It's like way easier to remember. Just Tamer Old Guy. <coughs> So he's going to activate Leo's effect. He's going to banish something in his graveyard. I don't know if he's going to go two or what. I think this guy can do two per turn, right? Nope, just one. Okay, my mistake. <clears throat> so he banishes the Kana Hawk. He needs to do a really big power play here, though. Because he not only needs to take out the scout on board, but he needs to take out the other scout. So... His opponent, I mean, he can MST the other scout, the one that is in Squid's hand, but Squid's going to have four cards by the time that he plays that second scout. Or by, by the time it comes back to his turn, he'll have four cards in hand. That's a lot. <clears throat> so, 
So what is uh, Shakur going to do? It seems like to me, Ritual Beast rely a ton on those two um, trap cards. I mean, to blow up monsters and the special summon monsters, I wish that they, I wish that one of their guys like banish monsters or something like that. <clears throat> so he's going to activate the monks effect, giving up the MST. And now what's he going to do? Okay, so he brings out the regular hawk. It also seems a little slow to um to have to. I mean, the spell, the, the traps are great. Don't get me wrong. You get the traps, you get to blow up monsters, but it's like it's really slow if you have to. Like if he needs to answer this board now, and he has to get you know he has to wait. And okay, so he's going exit on night. <clears throat> That's one way to get rid of the board. Well, I mean, not stealth, but everything else that isn't stealth. I honestly didn't even know they played Exiton Knight. Keep that in mind, Stealth will not die. Because he is currently level 8, and this is rank 4, not rank 8. Card of Ex I mean, the price of Exiton Knight is going up. Anybody else see that? <clears throat> so, what's the game plan now? You had to give up your MST to get rid of the board. Do you have another MST? And even if he did, that wouldn't kill the stealth. That would not solve the stealth problem. It'd be better if that um if that trap they had could blow up monsters and uh back row, that'd be like way better. Alright, so I guess he chained Kana or he chained the um Wait, how did he get these two? He must have chained that dolphin's ability to uncontact. So now he has his two that he started with, which means I guess he can just contact again for that pink dolphin, or really to any of them. I think they all have the same, like all of the Ritual Beast fusions all have the same requirements. It's just like a, a, a tamer and a spirit beast. <clears throat> now I wonder if he'll go back into the pink dolphin. Let's move that out the way. Nope, he goes into Conahawk this time. Let's try to read this card really quickly. You do not need polymerization. Okay, so you can return two of your banish to um to get a trap. I mean, well, it, technically it's Ritual Beast card, so I guess you can get the monsters or you can get a spell. But I've I've never seen anybody play a Ritual Beast spells, so I'll assume the traps are pretty much like where it's fucking at. So he'll probably activate that effect first off. And during either player's turn, you can contact. Oh, okay. Or you can uncontact. <clears throat> so he's going to uncontact for the penguin and I believe that's Laura. And then he also is going to activate the effect. So he's going to be able to search himself. Okay, so you get Steeds, that's what it's called, gotcha. Steeds is the big ass infernity break. It's so it's it should be it should be back row too. That'd be way better. If it was back row and monsters. It, it just says cards, like that'd be better. Well then it'd almost be like Fire Lake of the Ritual Beast. <laughs> but you don't have to tribute, yeah, that's what it would turn into. Fire Lake of the Ritual Beast. Alright, so he goes into another Conahawk. He's just banishing up a storm. <clears throat> Conahawk, are you not once per turn? Once per turn. Okay, yeah, you are. So the dolphin got banished by Pingu. It is a penguin and it is also a spirit beast. Interesting. A green penguin. <clears throat> Okay, so now he's going to activate its effect. I swear to goodness, it, it, spirit beasts are so difficult to, to understand like half the time what the fuck is going on with the deck. I guess now he's going to search... Oh, he's going to search another Steeds. I thought he was going to get ambushed. <clears throat> now he can't uncontact anymore, so... 
just making sure I can read this correctly. Yes, he added two steeds and set two and has one card in his hand. <coughs> so basically he gets two pops. Problem is that scout though. That, that's a problem because he can just summon five monsters and you don't have five ritual beasts. So that's an issue. Definitely can use some night beams right now. Or M MST I guess does. Nah, it doesn't do the same thing. Yeah, you want Night Beam. Play Scout. Uh, it doesn't have any way to stop it, so just gonna let him get whatever the hell he wants. This time he gets Disc. Okay, plays Carrier so that he can Pendulum. <coughs> One, two, three, four. Double Carrier is obviously the problem here. You don't want your guys getting bounced. Now, let me just make sure this guy can uncontact during your opponent's turn. Yeah, during either player's turn, you can return. Okay, yeah, so he can uncontact now. <clears throat> and then he could blow up the two carriers, but that wouldn't technically stop the um that wouldn't stop him from tributing for disc. So he's in a he's he's in between a rock and a hard place right now. I mean, it doesn't seem like if the if the two back row are both steeds, I guess the only thing he's thinking of is what he should go after. <clears throat> Okay, so he lets him go. I mean, he lets him do it. Chain link one is carry on Exiton. Okay, chain link two is carry on Scout so that he can add it to the hand. I don't quite get that. He already has a Scout in his hand, doesn't he? <coughs> I guess he feels like he doesn't need it. And he wants to be able to summon two monsters, so I guess that works. I mean Exiton, he's gonna lose Exiton regardless. I don't I don't think that there's any way to protect that guy. Yeah, he's talking about the he's talking about the scout that's actually on the field. Like in the monster zones, not the scout in the pendulum zone. <clears throat> I just don't know why he would um I don't know why he would bounce the scout, because he already has a scout in hand. Unless he has storm in his hand. If he drew like storm, I guess it technically makes sense. But it's like if you drew storm, why 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 not just activate storm first? You know what I mean? Like, why even, why even commit to the summon? Just use Storm first, and then that would just pretty much do it. So he's gonna chain both steeds, and then he's going to uncontact. So now he gets to blow up four monsters. So he gets rid of everybody. That wasn't bad. Yeah, but um, Exiton still gets nuked. Now I guess he didn't use this effect. Why why did he not use this effect? Unless he just doesn't like have any more monsters or anything. <clears throat> so now he's gonna use the Apoleo's effect. Which means he gets to banish one of his um his what's it called? He gets to banish one of his guys. And he also gets um he gets extra attack and defense too. A lot of people don't realize that. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it's permanent. Yeah, that, that attack and defense gain, it stays on there. So this dude can actually get really, really beefy. Now, unfortunately for him, he has Vandy's emptiness. So, you know, I mean, he can keep, he can just beat him down with the lion though. It's 2300 attack. It's legit. And he's going to activate it again. This motherfucker is about to go to 2800 attack. Y'all better recognize. This little cute lion can basically beat down. This this lion is stronger than a carrier now. It's the same attack as a fucking disc and a stealth. A tribute summon di a disc or a stealth. If a, he normal summons a disc or a stealth now and it's not tribute summon, it's only going to be, what, 2100 because of the, um, the carrier? So now he summons the hawk. Okay. 
I believe that's when. All right. He says, I'm just going in. I'm just going to attack, attack, attack. And Squid has uh, he's he has these vanities, but he's still getting smacked down. And also, he only has one more scout in him, so that kind of sucks. I think Squid might lose because he has another scout in his hand, and that's no good. Okay, so he summons Helix. He's 2100 attack. I guess he's going to attack Win. I mean, um, excuse me, Laura. He better, I hope he realizes that this attack gain is permanent. And this can be used on both turns. Alright, so he banishes Wind. Okay, Kana Hog dies. He only takes 200 damage though. He says witches. They all gain it. They all gain it, bro. It's, it's all of them. Yeah, I, I, Apollo is during either player's turn. So now this dude is, he's not, he's not even 2,800 anymore. This motherfucker is 3,300 attack. Okay. Squiddy scoops it up. When he came, when it came back to his turn, this, that dude, the freaking lion was going to be at 3,800 attack and he was going to ram straight into your damn, uh, scout or not scout helix and you were just going to die. So. That is crazy. Um, <laughs> Squiddy had two vanities and three scouts and lost. How the fuck does that happen? <laughs> like, how did that happen? Really? He had a, he had a, he had two vanities that he played and he had a scout on board. He had a scout in the pendulum zone and he had a scout in his hand and he still somehow lost. So. Huh, they played Miracle Dig? I didn't even know that they played that. Um, I didn't know that they played that card. But I guess, honestly, if he can just get that lion and just keep using that motherfucker's effect and just keep pumping it up and pumping it up and pumping it up, I mean, it might get too big. Like, that thing could probably take down the damn towers. You know what I mean? So, uh, little lion gets the job done. That's the, the, the strangest win you'll ever see. All right, they're going into the side decks. I'm thinking if I'm um, Shakur, all I want to do is just side in as much uh, spell and trap hate as I possibly got in my deck uh, outs to vanityness because I would like to play Yu-Gi-Oh uh, outs to skill drain because once again I'd like to play Yu-Gi-Oh you know twisters and mystical space tie well he already probably he has three of those in the main deck anyway but um yeah bring in some twisters maybe some fairy winds I probably bring in some uh, mass destruction bottomless trap hole mirror force so when you try and go over extension and YOLO on me, I can, I can just, you know, keep you in check. So it looks like he's going to open up with sacrifice helix and scout with a back row two back row, excuse me. And it is Shakur's turn. This is a really strong opening against most decks. Uh, especially if you've got like, um, a soul transition. All right. So he opens up with Pingu. It's going to activate Pingu's effect. And he'll banish a ritual beast from his deck. Okay, no sight of skill drain or laser. I mean, not laser queep, but uh, recreate or none of that, none of that jazz. So I guess he's just gonna let him do it. And he is sitting at nine thousand life points because of that upstart. So it would be kind of difficult to OTK somebody at nine thousand. All right. I'm going to say he's going to probably banish win because that's what he did in the last game. Nope. Nope. Okay. So instead of uh, sending win, he sent something else. Is that a monster slots? What? I haven't seen that card in so long. Oh, my God. Windups used to use it like a long time ago. Yeah, the monsters have to be um, the same level. <laughs> and then if you draw the card and it's the same level, I think you can special summon it too. Oh man, I have to read the problem solving the problem solving text on this card now. It's been a long time. Okay, let me just keep reading this. Once we turn, no, 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 this one. Okay, you can banish the target. Okay, then you draw a card, reveal it. If it's the same card, you can special summon it. Yeah, so he would have been able to special summon Monk, but he has vanity, so obviously no special summon in there. <clears throat> All right, so what are you gonna do, Shakur? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have vanities anyway, so it's not like um, 
It's not like he can special summon the monk. So it's really not that big of a deal. But if he had, if he would have had, um, if he would have had like MST, that would have been really bad for squids because he would have been able to summon monk and activate the effect potentially, or just like exceed, get, maybe make a castell, get rid of the scout and keep it moving. Okay. So he plays scout. I'm going to say he's going to go for stealth. That makes the most sense to me. And he does go for stealth. He's asking if he has a response and stealth goes to the graveyard. Unless he has like traps on, I guess. Okay. So he looks at his opponent's hand to verify that he has no more stealths. I wonder what it, I have no idea what the hell's in his hand, but I know it ain't stealth no more. Okay. He's going for the double scout. I guess he thinks maybe he'll just pop it with, um, Helix. I don't believe in double scout. I think it's one of the worst things you can do. Um, especially if you're playing against, if you're playing against, uh, what's it called? You're playing as Necros. It's so bad. Oh my goodness. He has another mind crush. <laughs> Incredible. All right. So he will now attack. And unless he has something up his sleeve, Pingu dies. That double mind crush though. So all he has is Helix in his hand. You know it'd be crazy if he just top deck snatch deal. Like that, that's just, that's pretty much GG. <laughs> if he top deck snatch deal, that'd be so good. Cause you'd just be able to snatch deal his monster and summon something big and then attack attack. Cause he's only sitting at 5,600 life points. And if he wants to search any more cards, gotta pay them life points. All right, so he's once an MST, but you I mean you gotta you gotta side in other stuff, not just MST, but you know, side in twisters, dust tornado, fairy wind, um, spell shattering arrow. Although that that yeah that would that would actually turn off MST. I mean that would turn off vanities because it would um hit sacrifice. <clears throat> so he summons another penguin. It's gonna activate the effect. This time since Conahawk to be banished. He says, do you even know what they do? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think Squiddy knows what they, what the fuck he, what, what any of the, um, the, the ritual beasts do. Alright, so. It doesn't, it still doesn't seem like he has a play in him. So he's gonna activate another monster slots. Wait a minute. Let's see if you can target one monster in your graveyard. Um, yeah. According to the problem solving text, it, it seems that you can use this under vanities. It says mandatory to special summon. Yeah, it, it's not mandatory to special summon. It's only mandatory to special summon if it's the same level, you idiot. If you draw something that's not the same level, you don't special summon, so it's not mandatory. You can still use this under vanities. I mean, he could end up drawing a spell or trap. So, yeah. He says, oh, Beast, Net Decker is looking... No, you can you can use this under vanities. <clears throat> the activation condition is obviously that you can target this and this. <clears throat> is that you obviously target the monster and the monster that you control at the same level. Then you banish the target in the graveyard, then draw one card and reveal it. And then if it has the same level, then you special summon it. So I, I would think that you'd be able to use that under Vanity's Emptiness. I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm not, I'm not understanding why they had a obligatory third party look it up. He says it has to finish the effect. I'm not so sure about that. But I do think it's interesting he's playing three monster slots. I mean, I guess he could potentially rip MST off a monster slot. So it is, it is like free draws. Okay, so I guess Shakur is going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's going to say, all right, well, I won't use it. Okay, better hope that that ruling comes back that way because it could change the game. 
So he's going to activate one of his scouts for disc. And he MSTs his own vanities. <laughs> I was going to say, if he tribute summons for disc, he won't be able to special summon. Because vanities will die in another chain link. All right, so he's popping his own scout so that obviously he can still pendulum. So he's going to summon Carrier and Helix. He wants to get Monolith to draw cards. And then he gets to, he gets to just pendulum back the, um, the Helix anyway. So it's like not that big of a deal. And the scout if he wants it. Just put everything in attack mode, honestly. Okay, we're going to game three. Uh, that time Shakur could not play around the vanities. He says he had two math. Maybe he's talking about mathematician, but unless he's playing shit all dragon, I don't understand how that helps. If you couldn't uh, get rid of that damn, if you couldn't stop that damn OTK, you weren't going to get another turn. So yeah, Shakur needs to, what's it called? Um, he needs spell and trap removal. Uh, so far, all we've seen is that MST, and that's not really going to cut it against Cleese because... Cleese can play cards like Skill Drain and Vanities that don't let you play Yu-Gi-Oh! So unless you're going to go the Ice Hand, Fire Hand route like Necros do, um, you're definitely going to need to side in some type of Spell and Trap removal. I mean, shit, bring in, Vandy, I mean, bring in Rogue to Kree if you need it. But, I mean, that would turn off his traps, though. So And he and considering they're searchable, I'm pretty sure he wants those things live. To me, it just seems like uh, Fairy Wind and Twister are the best deal. So we're going to see if Shakur can run this back. Now I wonder if he'll go first. Okay, he opts to go first. Which means that you know you need to deal with a scout. Because uh, my mentality has always been if you give Klee's six cards, they're going to have scout. If you give them five, eh, sometimes they have scout. Most of the time they have it, but sometimes they might not. But if you give them six cards, they're going to have they gonna have scout. They're, they're either going to have scout or they're going to have summoner's art or they're going to have... Um, a card that gets them to Summoner's Art. Alright, so he's going to open up with Conahawk. Activate the effect. Let's see what type of board he can um, make turn one. And if Squiddy has Maxi or not. Maxi seems like it is really, really good against this deck. Especially when they start contacting and <laughs> doing things like this. Activating those teleports. You can chain Max C to that and see how many cards you can draw. It's a shame this guy isn't Earth, right? He'd be able to bring out a tuner, recover, and then um, go into Naturia Beast. And <laughs> just hope that Naturia Beast can beat Cleese, right? Alright, so it looks like he's going to contact. Contact has been made. Brings out the Conahawk. Probably going to activate the effect. Start searching out some uh, some trap protection. I just I don't know if he's going to get Steeds or Ambush. I'm I'm, I'm going to say he's probably going to get Steeds. Yeah, exactly. Maxi for the deck out. All he, need, all he needs is 35 special summons. I mean, he could do it, right? Okay, so we got Ultimate Conahawk on board. He's going to uncontact. And then one goes to the graveyard. He uh gets to search. It is a it is a pretty cool combo honestly. The prices of these cards are pretty much nothing. 15 cent, a dollar, 79 cent. I mean, you can build pretty much the entire Ritual Beast deck for like well, I don't know about everything in the extra deck. Because, you know, uh, Lightning Chidori is a little expensive. But outside of Lightning Chidori, man, you can pretty much build everything for like $30 maybe. Like, I don't even know if it's be, yeah, probably $30 with shipping. Like, that seems like a really good, um, that seems like a really good price. <laughs> so what's going on now? Okay, so he says you honked Laura and got it. All 
Okay, I guess, hold on, let me make sure this card can only be summoned once. After this card is normal summoned, you can normal summon any blah 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 blah. You can only special summon this card once per turn. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> I'm on eight now. All right, so he summons the second kind of hot. See, man, that, that's the thing about Ritual Beasts. And I never really know what all of them do. So it's like, I I, I have no idea if somebody's cheating or not. It, I, I'm going to have to learn the deck eventually. I'm going to play it in an event and get totally fucked up because my opponent's going to be cheating. I'm not even going to know. <clears throat> now, I think when this guy uncontacts, he has to uncontact for at least one Banish monster. If I'm not mistaken. Actually, it has to be two Banish monsters. Wow. Okay, so he goes YOLO back row, uh, YOLO back row, and, I mean, we, we know that he has one steed, so it's like, what the fuck? Oh, boy, he might have Storm. No Storm? Really? Still no Storm? Oh, he didn't want to get mine, <laughs> he didn't want to get mine crushed. I, I'm not gonna lie, I've done that too. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't wanna, you don't wanna, what's it called? You don't wanna get mine crushed. Got it. Cause if he, <laughs> if he if he would have had mind crush for uh if he would have let the scout go and then he mind crushes whatever he searches from scout then he gets to see all his cards and he knows how to play around them so you set the cards first and then you play the scout I, I do that sometimes with um Sertella Knights I'll set all my back row and then I'll activate Rota as like the only card in my hand because I don't want to get um mind crushed and then you know what my my back row are so you give your opponent like practically no information. All right, he has Lauren uh, Conahawk on board. He's got the Conahawk and the Big Hawk. Okay. So what's he going to do? Now, she was not, what's it called? She was not normal summon, so she's not going to be having any type of effects. But this dude might. Once per turn, you can ban. Okay, he's activating Conahawk's ability. The um The little one. <laughs> not this one. Not the ultimate version that has uh, a chick with green hair riding it. Okay, so he gets Apolio and he banishes that. He needs one more banished card if he wants to uncontact, though. So that's kind of a problem, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure my guy here wants to uncontact, but he doesn't have quite what he needs to do it. Unless he just contacts. Okay, well then there you go. Now he can uncontact. Now I wonder which one he'll contact into. If he'll go for the Altaleo or if he'll go for the ultimate pink dolphin. Okay, so that's the ultimate Leo. The artwork on this card, I'm not going to lie. The artwork on this card is badass. Ooh, unfortunately, Blackhorn of Heaven. Apparently people still play that card. So yeah, Black Horn of Heaven hits the um the Leo. So goodbye, Leo. Now he can't uncontact this, and you can't Black Horn of Heaven and uncontact. <laughs> but then again, he could torrential you, and that would that would kind of suck. That would really, really, really kind of suck. Now I have actually seen Squiddy um Black Horn before. I, I've seen him do it against Burning Abyss, oddly enough. He did it against a Dante. Uh, no, he did it against a Virgil. And it um it put in some work. I mean, I guess it's like a decent substitute. The bottom was in that situation. Uh, it could be good against the Tower Knights too. I don't know, pretty much what else you'd want to side it against. Shadows. I mean, Shadows. They they summon through fusion and ritual. I mean, um, Necro is summoned through ritual summon, so it doesn't work against those. <coughs> So I assume he's going to activate the ultimate Conahawk. Now, I don't know what he's planning on summoning back here. He's going for Laura and the regular Hulk. And I wonder if Squiddy has anything to stop that, like a Vanities or something like that. Okay, so he's going to let him do it. And he's going to chain uh, its effect, too, because it's a cost. Oh, boy. Yeah, Vanny's Emptiness. He couldn't play it before, but now he can play it. So 
That really bites. I mean, he's able to get himself. Oh, okay. Now, instead of searching traps, he's going to search Leo. Uh oh. Yeah. He might go for Leo beatdown, actually. I just thought about that. Cause he has a lot of spirit beast cards or he has a lot of ritual beast cards in his graveyard. I mean, he might just beat him the fuck down with Leo. So he attacks for 2300. And now he sets one. Keep in mind, he's still got steeds. So it's like if he top decks a monster, he can just blow it up with steeds. Not to mention, it's going to be hard for him to get over this guy anyway. It's 2300. Unless he has skill drain. Skill drain obviously just says no. <clears throat> so he top decks a scout. He goes for Helix. Okay. There's Helix. And his last card in hand is Monolith. Which it doesn't really make sense for him to play because he can't pendulum summon because he has vanities. Or he could totally play it for no reason, right? <laughs> I guess he was scared of that getting Mind Crush too. Now I'm I'm a little surprised that Shakur didn't activate um didn't activate Apolio's effect during his last turn. But I mean, I don't know. So he summons Win. And he's going YOLO. I mean, I would attack, and if my opponent didn't have a response, I would probably activate Leo's effect. Okay, so now this Leo is 28, and this is 23. So this is game. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm I'm flabbergasted. We see we see just savage wins by Ritual Beast, and more shockingly, it's like Ritual Beast just out they out controlled the Klees. Klees, I mean, you saw Squiddy try and turn the game into a slow match with Vanity, saying, "Okay, well, you can't special summon," and it's like he got out beat he he lost the beatdown game to a damn lion. I don't know. I'm flabbergasted. I still don't 100% know what these guys do. All I know is um, they seem to have the clean number right now. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching as always.